Hey Jillers, it's Adam Jupe, and in this video we're going to go over the Maroon Sling Curriculum. The Maroon Sling Curriculum is going to take you a little bit longer than the Orange Sling and the Red Sling Curriculums have in the past because it demands a little bit more from you as a driller. There's going to be a lot more precision, a lot more, don't just throw an aerial, but throw a perfect good aerial with a vert stop, things like that. So as you approach this, just be aware that these tricks are meant to slow you down and that you should be taking a lot more time to really hone this in. The reason for that is that as you approach the Green Sling and Blue Sling Curriculum, you start approaching a category where small mistakes can make really big injuries happen. So take these tricks seriously, take these tricks with as much time as you need and approach them as you need to approach them and you're going to be just fine. Without further ado, let's get into it. Our first trick is going to be a triple vert stop. So the triple vert stop is going to be a little bit more than a triple aerial. So the aerial is going to end up like that. Um, I do recommend starting with learning the triple aerial first. You really want to be able to hone in this triple aerial. Just make sure that your heels stay planted and that you're able to completely track it in the air. What I do recommend is that instead of throwing small, low aerials, go for higher, slower rotation ones. The higher you can get it and the slower you can get it, the easier it will be to track. So the real secret to this is under throwing it just a little bit. If you throw a perfect bird stop and you get it here, the rifle is going to carry itself over. Instead, what you want to do is almost throw like a triple left left, right? So almost here and then catch it here. If you do end up throwing a triple left left, which the next skill set is going to be the double left left on the Maroon Sling curriculum. So you shouldn't be having that much need for control. But essentially, as it comes into your hands, you might uh, get a minor penalty for the tap-tap if that happens. Not a big deal. You'll still be able to pass the trick. More important than anything is getting this vert stop straight up and down. The biggest source of penalty would be people trying to catch this vert stop, the rifle pulling their arm over, and them accruing a moderate or a major penalty because of it. Do that. Instead, high, slow rotations so you can track it and get that nice strong stop. You might even stop a little bit early. As long as both hands come together and the rifle stops vertically, you're gonna be able to pass this trick with flying colors. Next, let's talk about the double left left. The double left left is honestly not that bad of a trick. Um, there are a couple of components that can trip you up, but it's a flow maneuver and it's a flow aerial, and it happens really much right in front of your face. And the trick for this one is that you're not throwing a double instead you're throwing one and a half okay so practice that one and a half here for a one and a half you're gonna have this sling facing down right so throw that one and a half get that sling facing down get that sling facing down like mid center of your body because how this works is when you do a single spin you actually catch when the rifle is sling side down and then you could bring it round behind your body right if you were to catch here you have nowhere to go with it. All of your momentum, if you catch sling side up, is already taken. So the only thing you can do is dip your shoulder into it and try and work your way around, which is going to be really bad for him. So much like that single spin has that point of contact with the sling facing down, so too will that double vert stop sling facing down here, right? So after you get that double left left, or that one and a half really, you're going to want to start working that like catching with your left hand underneath and maybe using your other hand to like guide it, right? Just to make sure. After you're finished getting comfortable with it, this right hand needs to be pinned. It needs to be pinned strong and tight because this entire trick takes place on the left side of your body, okay? Most naturally, you're going to want to go behind the back with it. And if you go behind the back, your right hand is already here. So when you have that strong pin, you're going to be able to get whatever combo you're looking for out of it, whether it's a Hell's Whip or a wrist wrap or uh, any sort of BTP. So that's what it's going to be good for. So the next point that you'll, you might accrue a penalty for is for like digging your eyes into it. If you notice when I do my double left lefts, my eyes are locked straight ahead. And that's kind of scary. but. You get used to the idea, because it's all in your peripherals anyways, and so you get used to that idea that it's right there. You might lose points, especially if your head is like really dug into it. You'll probably lose points there, and if it's just your eyes, you're still going to lose a little bit of points, whether it's on the drill dojo curriculum or 
whether it is in a competition. Because if you can do this in front of a judge, if you can make eye contact and throw a double left left, they're going to understand that you have total control of this rifle. And that's really what you want to hone in. Strong hand pin, eyes locked forward, catching on the sling side here, and everything will fall into place. Okay, all that bearing, that hand pin, eyes locked forward, everything should flow very naturally. For the left hand over the head continuous, two, three, four, five, you need five rotations with your eyes locked forward and a good plane. So in order to accomplish all of those things, just start with that single spin and then work your way up to one, two. Try not to look. You really, really, really want to do it without looking, right? Because if you get in this habit of seeing where it is, one, you lose plane, but two, once you stop looking at it, you're going to have the same problems anyways. So just add to that count. One, two, three, four. Just keep adding until you're able to do it five times in a row. You want this hand pin nice and tight. Your arm will be at this nice 90 degree angle here. That's going to be really good practice for making sure that those OTH stay well controlled. Um, so work that in as well, making sure that this arm stays here like you're doing, like you're flexing your bicep, right? And you're going to feel it. All of your forearm and your bicep will feel it as you're doing that left hand continuous. But when you get able to do it, again, it's one of those tricks that you're able to make eye contact with the judge, hit five over the heads without looking with this strong hand pin, and demonstrate total control. So embrace that fear. Maybe start in front of a reflection if you need to, but keeping that those eyes forward and keeping a strong confidence about the maneuver is going to be your best bet to getting this trick perfect. To do a right hand continuous, the best place you want to start is with the rifle behind your back, okay? So you're going to do a behind the back transfer here. And you want your hand to be slightly above the balance point. So if this is the balance point here, this is the upper sling swivel, somewhere in between. And when you do this, you want to lead with your elbow, okay? So the right hand OTH continuous needs to have a flat plane. And for qualification purposes, you need to do it five times. In order to get that flat plane, you want to take this elbow here, and you want to make it very straight. And you want to go over your head, leading with the elbow, okay? This leading with the elbow is going to guide the rifle into its plane. Because when you go up here and you whip around, the only place for your equipment to go is uh, in that flat plane, okay? So close to the head in that flat plane with your arm at a 90 degree angle. Okay. Once you hit this 90 degree angle here, you are free to let go and do your five continuous spins over the head. This provides the whip to get started. Okay, So unlike the OTH left hand, which you can get started with your just your hand itself, really, right there, the right hand continuous isn't quite the same way. It's not... It's not easy to just get started with the hand so it's easy to do this is basically a right hand drag motion but instead of going in front to finish the drag you're going above and over so if you think of it as an evolution of a right-handed drag you're gonna have an easier time building that momentum to get up and over your head as usual with OTHs that don't aerial if you look at it you're gonna ruin that that plane right there okay so every time you look up the instinct is for the rifle to be flat against your gaze, but the gaze is not going to be uh, flat up against the sky. So that's what you want to look out for when doing this, is to not look at it in order to get that up and over and straight above your head. Also, it's helpful to use your thumb. So as you bring it around, use this thumb to pull it in and have a really good grasp on it. That's really going to help keep that nice level and flat. The rest of it, all the OTHs, so it starts up here, but all the rest of them are going to be at this midpoint here over the head, and that's where you're going to pop it up as you go. This is a good point to choose if you're going to be a left-hand continuous or right-hand continuous driller. Most drillers uh, struggle with bouncing back and forth between them, so it's a good opportunity now to decide which side you prefer to have the most control on. The TIC crossplane is going to be the, probably your first foray into crossplanes, but the big secret here 
is that it's not actually a cross plane. So before we get into proper technique and everything, we're going to start from a C set, and it's going to start like a rising sun, pretty much up to the rising sun portion. Um, and just before transfer, right over here, you're going to toss it up. But what I want you to look for is that the actual release point is here. And if you notice, if the release point is here, the barrel of the rifle is already cutting in front of the face. So when you think of this as a cross plane, don't think of it as a cross plane. Think of it as pretending it's a cross plane. A judge won't know the difference, especially if you're facing them. It's a fake cross plane, right? It still counts as a cross plane because it still looks like a cross plane. So visually, it's a cross plane. It's just not a true cross plane like the Centino was. Now, what about that technique? We already mentioned you do a C set into a rising sun, but you don't go flat with it, okay? This flat part will ruin you. Instead, you want to start getting ready for that throw when the rifle was facing towards the sky. This is where you chuck it up into the air. Now, if you haven't already, you should be working your C-sets with your thumb over top of this rounded part of the barrel. And if you haven't been doing that already, you're going to need to adjust that grip. No matter how big or small your hand is, you need to adjust or slide your hand so that your thumb, the knuckle, is around this top part of the rounded part of the barrel. What this is going to do is this part right here acts as the transfer of energy moving from your shoulder, through your arm, through your hand. That's how you're going to get the height. This doesn't come from just root momentum. Uh, it really comes from pushing all of that momentum through your thumb in order to get height. That's where that height comes from, and that's why it's very important. This is also very important for a full ninja. That's the same place that the height comes from on your full ninja, except it, you keep all the momentum behind you. So full ninja is almost nothing more than a TIC crossplane done behind the back. But that'll be on a future curriculum. For this one, all you got to worry about building that momentum that you're going to transfer up through your thumb to throw into the air. For qualification purposes, a full TIC will have the rifle go up through the air, and you will be catching it sling side down. It's technically a like a one and a half up in the air, not just a single. That's because this is meant more to be a flow maneuver or a maneuver into over the heads, right? If you do the one less, which is here, you're going to incur a double major penalty for aerials that are not rotated enough. So make sure as you're doing it, you go high and up in order to catch it. Another major point of failure for this trick is going to be the heels bouncing up off the ground. So a lot of people want to throw it like that. That's because they're not using this thumb effectively to transfer that momentum to throw it through the air to preserve its natural rotation while also getting that height. So keep your feet grounded. If you find yourself having to do this, it's because your, your grip is not in the right place for your thumb and you're not transferring this momentum enough. Other than that, nothing super surprising about it. It is a right-right catch. So like left-lefts, that happens with the sling side facing down. You grab it so you can flow into other tricks. One major note on the TIC crossplane is that you need to know where your bail point is, okay? Whenever you do crossplane maneuvers, you have to know where you want to bail in the event that it goes weird or wild. Because the TIC goes from behind you to in front of you, your bail point is behind you. Do not try and duck and run forward as might be your instinct. Instead, if you find it too far up, you want to step backwards through it because the rifle of momentum is already pushing it this way. So stepping down and back is going to be your best way to bail from a TIC. The Centino crossplane is a true crossplane, meaning that it's going to go from one side of your body to the other with the release point being on the left and the catch point being on the right. To accomplish the Centino, most people are going to start with this single spin. And this single spin is going to set up your hand positions for moving the rifle across the body. When you do the single spin at your right side of the body, you're going to catch it right here on the upper sling swivel, right where this band is. This is going to help you swoop the rifle across, and it's going to allow you to keep the rifle in a position of control. The Centino power comes from, I like having my finger on this band, but it comes from being above the balance point, but not too far. In order to warm up for this, I do recommend just throwing 
non uh, non cross plane centinos, just throwing at your side in order to get used to how it's supposed to go. This is going to let you really feel out what you need to do aerial wise for your centino. All of this power comes from the right hand. So this left hand, it can go away. It doesn't actually need to be there except to help guide it if you need it. Now, what it really does is it helps facilitate the transfer of energy to your right hand more than anything. So think of this trick as being mostly a right hand exclusive. As it comes around to the side of your body, you're going to throw it up and the rifle barrel will come on this side of your body as you're pulling your arm over. Okay. There is a catch angle requirement here. Catch angle expectation. It's going to be flat. You can catch it one handed and push it back with that momentum, or you can catch it both handed as I just demonstrated. Now, this is a scary trick because it's a true cross plane. As such, I recommend dropping over grass. Okay? If you can do that over grass, of course, you're going to start figuring out where that rifle needs to be in relation to you. So, start putting it really far away. When you're comfortable with it far away, step out and grab it, right? Take a big step and grab it. Um, then you can start honing it in. Once you're at a big step, take a smaller step, right? You will have to get over the fear of the rifle being over your head as you do this and stepping into it. Now, the reason it's important to do it in this fashion, where you throw it really far and closer and closer, is that way your bail point is safe. Because if you get in the habit of cross planting it here, and you realize it's going this way, but it's going to land on your head, your bail point is behind you. Your bail point is off to the left. That's going to help if you throw it too close over your head. Because the problem with saying that the bail point is to your left if you're not throwing that way, if the rifle is all the way over and you can't get that cross plane, then your bail point is not going to be to the left anymore. So accomplishing the cross plane first will allow you to safely bail down and through the rifle in the event that it's underthrown or doesn't get far enough uh, to the right side of your shoulder. There is an aerial requirement here. This should land sling side facing down. Uh, if you do less than that, you will accrue the double major penalty for throwing an aerial less than what it needs to be. Other than that, uh, the Centino cross plane, uh, a lot of it's going to be, you know, hitting those hand pins is extra. Uh, I would advise against like tracking it too much. Um, you really want to make it look like it's very well under controlled. I do the one handed there so that my left hand can demonstrate proper pin. Um, but if you are doing both hands, then there isn't a good point to pin in that maneuver. But avoid taking the step for your qualification video when you really want to demonstrate that control. Really have it honed in. Really keep it tight above your body. Strong catch. You're going to have no problems with this. For the Rising Sun double exit, you're going to want to start with a Rising Sun. And then you want to work on these single exits here. So this is a nice little handoff from the left side to the right side. And as you're working these, work on your hand pins. This is a great opportunity to warm up your double exits by working these single exits and focusing on these hand pins. These hand pins are the single biggest point of mistake on this trick outside of stepping for a rifle that is beard. Now, as you're doing these singles, You'll notice that your hand is up here. It's going to be in between the upper sling swivel and the balance point for this trick as well, okay? So run into these, and instead of doing a little single here, you want to go higher. It really is that simple. You're going to catch it on the right hand, sling side facing down, okay? So work on that throw here, right hand under, up, throw, good, right hand under, and build up to that flow catch. This is a trick with a high risk of jamming your finger. Okay, so really, really work this. Um, don't be afraid to drop it. 
try and keep your feet planted. Try and keep your right hand waiting for it at some sort of stiff at the ready, right? What you don't want to do is kind of like wait for it like in kind of like an open hand like way. That doesn't make any sense. So stay nice and firm. And anytime the rifle is not in your hands, hate that hand pin, right hand pin, left, right, left. And you're gonna wanna alternate these hand pins one for one. There is no other secret than just getting really good at this. I recommend doing it for warm-ups, but if you can do the single, it is as simple as going one higher. And that's how to do a rising sun double exit. The single tomahawk is a trick that you can do outside of a Statue of Liberty. It is kind of painful to learn on your wrist. It, it does require a, a fair amount of wrist strength um, in order to pull it off. But once you get the hang of it, once you feel out how it's supposed to go, it feels a lot better. There are two techniques. I prefer to do the brandish technique to build that momentum. But some other drillers can just grab it. They go a little bit lower and they just tomahawk it like that. Um, that's not my preferred technique, but it is a thing you can do. So if you were going the second route, which is not going to be too much focus of this instructional, it really is just pulling back and pulling up. I like the brandish technique because it comes out of a natural Statue of Liberty. It builds momentum and it teaches when the, that release point happens in order for the rifle to go straight up. So what you want to do is work on this brandish here. If you haven't already, this is also very nice for underarm cranks if you have learned those. So work on that brandish. This is probably what's going to hurt your wrist the most. And that release point happens here on this arc up. So a lot of people are going to make the mistake thinking that it needs to be released here. And if you release here, think about where the momentum of the rifle is, right? If this is traveling on a circle and you release momentum, it travels on a tangent to that circle. Well, that arrow will be pointing this way. And so the rifle will go forward. So that proper release point will happen as the rifle is kicking back up behind your shoulder. So here's the balance point. You want that balance point to be right where it's going to land on the way down. A full single tomahawk will be caught on the upper hand guard of the rifle and brought back to the front position with the sling facing down. So that's where you want to focus, is getting that catch there. It's from basically Statue of Liberty to Statue of Liberty. So that is kind of the secret there, is that it's a, it's a one aerial back to Statue of Liberty. But you're going to hide a lot of that fact by bringing it straight down. Unless you don't want to. This totally counts as a full single tomahawk if you go Statue of Liberty to Statue of Liberty. But that is what that technique is to bring it down into your arm. Single tomahawk. The triple side toss has no secrets. If you can throw a single and if you can throw a double, then all you got to do is throw that triple. Try and keep, uh, this is going to take a lot of repetition because you want that triple to be right by your side. You want it to land flat, sling side facing up. You can catch it over your shoulder or you can catch it uh, by your side. Either way, it's going to work. Uh, common penalties are going to be the rifle bringing you off balance. So you're going to dip your shoulder into it. Or up here especially, it's going to get that little step you saw just a moment ago. Those tiny little things of not catching it perfectly are really, really going to be the big source of problems. Another big one's going to be stepping for it. All the common stuff you've already run into with the double side toss applies to the triple side toss. Something I'm really looking for in your video is for both of your hand pins to hit. If you hit both of those hand pins, you'll accrue no penalty on hand pins. But if you wait for it up here, you might accrue a penalty for those hand The Kiwi grab from double or higher is an evolution of the half beat from the lower catch point. So practice this half beat from the lower catch point and start working on like single Kiwi grabs, right? So if you're trying to like get that aerial down, you want to try and get this little single there and try and accentuate the aerial in order to get the double going. The double kiwi grab is going to have to have 
enough energy to pull into a half beat. So a lot of people are going to make this mistake of uh, catching it here and it brings their arm around or they catch it like too soon and they can't do anything with it. As a flow trick, it's very important to get that momentum going to grab it and roll it into a half beat maneuver so you can get to that right shoulder. That's part of the flow mechanic of the trick and a lot of people are going to accrue a penalty for stopping it awkwardly without having that or a penalty for not understanding the trick entirely. The double light catch from side toss is another one of those scary moves. Definitely warm up to it by doing single light catches, right? So hit that single, hit that single, and watch out for this barrel. Just feel it out. And then a good catch from a single or a double is going to have both hands touching the rifle at the same time with the rifle arced up at 45 degrees. This angle is what you are being judged against for penalties. So if you catch it flat, you're going to catch a penalty for not being at a 45. Same if you catch it vertically. Then you got to warm up your doubles and you really want to kind of overthrow this double here, right? Because it needs to land here. Once you have that component there, bring that double more in front of your body. And there's no way to catch this unless it's an Ike, right? So you have to go for the Ike in order to catch it. Because in front of the shoulder here, it's just, that's where it's got to be. So practice over grass, phase it in, throw it a little bit far out, let it fall to the grass, right? Feel that out. As it falls to the grass, bring it closer and closer until you're able to hit the Ike catch out of the double. Just like that. Keep your facial bearing together. There's no hand pin requirements here, so you're allowed to wait for it as it comes down. But try not to pad with your knees and try not to make any facial expressions on your face or else you'll accrue penalty for the dojo. A lot of anything extra from a single. So if you've been working that single, uh, really you just have to throw a double and step underneath it at the right time in order to get it together. Uh, so work on this double here because if you throw it too high, you're not going to catch it. It's kind of a little bit less than a double, right? And so work into this catch here with your hand underneath. And as it starts landing right, and your hand underneath, you want to throw this double and step through it and catch that back ninja nice and tight. A uh, common point of penalty will be this right hand reaching for it. So as soon as you hit here, that's going to be a big penalty point. Not getting a strong stop, having to like double adjust. Um, any secondary adjustments will accrue penalties. But you really want to slow double it, work your way into it, and try and find that sweet spot for the rifle to go, for your right hand to loop in or grab it tight. Grabbing it tight is generally best for a competition. The dojo doesn't penalize style. So as long as you get a strong stop here, you're going to be able to pass this trick. The J-hook is a very weird trick that looks like a lot more than what it is, but it's honestly not too terrible of a trick. It's not a big aerial, and it's not as dangerous as it looks, but you got to make sure you monitor where the butt is and where your cheek is. So this trick starts from a left wrap, okay? So you want to get this wrap here, and then your hand will go just above the balance point here. And you want to grab right on top here. The rifle will swing under with the barrel swinging under your arm, and the butt plate will naturally want to come over your shoulder. If you want to work this, try doing palm spins on your right side. If you do this right, if you're getting ready to do this right, you do a palm spin, just that one half, this will have your plane here. So the secret to building into it is to never let go and just do that one half. After you don't try, don't get into that habit. Just feel out to make sure that you're in plane. Because if you're not in plane, a uh, big problem is going to be not in plane. Then you're not going to be able to like do it, right? It'll hit your arm, um, and it'll fly away. So that's the point of that exercise: is to make sure you're in plane. Okay. And the more in plane you are, the longer you'll be able to go. In order to accomplish this J hook, now that it's here, you want to release just a little bit before it touches your shoulder. Okay, so right here is that release point. And you can work into that as well, just by slight popping it. Okay, you can keep that angle, you can slight pop it right into place. And you can already see that this rifle 
is on its way to behind the back. Behind the back is going to have your left hand right around the point of parade rest. And you want to keep your eyes on it by looking over your shoulder and leading into it. Um, best technique will not have you lean into it, honestly, but for practicing, in order to get it right, you want to find wherever it is, because not everyone's going to be perfect. And catch it right around the balance point with your hand, not out. Okay. The, the real secret's to let it fall. Try not to be afraid that it'll hit your legs or anything like that. It will while you're learning it, and you're just gonna have to wor work around that pain a little bit. Try not to overdo it. It is a very gentle, you can see just how gentle it is in that one warm up exercise. It's that gentle, it's a little couple inch pop. In order to get credit for this trick, you must release before the barrel is over the shoulder. Some people release once it's here and drop it, and you can do that for competition, but in order to gain credit, any credit at all on this trick, you must release slightly before uh, it's o over top of your shoulder or past your shoulder. Uh, after that, it's just important to maintain your posture and stance. Hit this right hand pin for the wrap. When you wrap, hit this right hand pin again. And as it's coming around, hit that left hand pin. So right hand pin, left, right. And that's how you're going to maximize your opportunities to make handpins and maximize your score on the J-hook. The Rising Sun double exit BTB flow catch is going to be, if, you, if you've been a flow driller by now, it's not going to be too bad. And the secret here is if you've been working those single behind the backs, it's the same catch, it's the same throw. And if you've been working through the curriculum in order, you've already got this double exit here, okay? The only difference is that the double exit, you want it down here, coming a little bit lower. So it's about two inches lower than normal. That two inches is what's going to make that catch from here to here, okay? So slightly under throw it. Otherwise, catch is the same. It's gonna be right around the base point of your back, sling side facing towards the ground. Footwork is the same. You just gotta wait for it a little bit longer. Make sure number one penalty is going to be hand pin, right hand pin the whole time. Footwork will be the second most important thing. The smoother you can get it, the better. Um, you really want just nice, flowy, smoothy footwork all around as you're catching it. Hit that hand pin, hit that footwork, and try not to do any power stops. Make sure it unwinds very naturally, and you'll maximize your points there. No other secrets. Very importantly, the number one penalty is going to be for something called raptor calling. People get afraid of the rifle as it's in the air, and their right hand comes all the way up to their chest. This shows fear, okay? And this is called raptor calling, kind of informally in the community. It is, I'm so afraid to get underneath it that I need to take my right hand from a hand pin all the way around so that way it's out of the way, right? You're tucking your shoulder. And in reality, this hand pin, if it's tight to your body, it's not going to be in the way at all. So do not do that raptor call technique. Hit that hand pin every time. The double under the leg is nothing more than a double left left where the rifle comes underneath and around your body. So do this low double left left exercise and wrap it around your body. Okay. So this is how you warm up to it. There's this low thing here. Next, really stretch out that thing because you're going to want to bring it up and over. And as you're doing this double left left thing, remember double left lefts are one and a half in secret, so it's going to be a very low throw. Your left hand will come underneath and catch on the sling side, and the rifle will swing with the butt first between the legs, okay? So it hits underneath, butt leads the way, and you unwind on the other side while your foot comes back to the position of attention. It is very hard to keep your balance here with this hand pin tight. Try your best to keep it as straight as possible. As it's coming under here, this hand pin should be straight. If you need balance, it will pull back, 
There are some penalties associated with it, but balance is more important because if you counterbalance and do it right, then you might not have to take a step afterwards. But that is the trick, double left, left, low, catch underneath. Big common point, people getting tangled, that's gonna be a major penalty, or people tapping their shoe because they over-rotated. If you over-rotate, it's gonna tap your shoe and you have to bring it around your leg. So work on those key components and you'll be able to pull this double under the leg into a really nice flow maneuver that looks great and exemplifies how precise you are with the rifle.